you. Thank you. So excited. Okay, now we're ready. Shane, Shane just started the recording. Shane, can you change my name on the screen? It's changed. It's, it's your oh, real name now. I absolutely love you guys. Oh, oh thank you. you. Even though they had me with the wrong person. So oh, I'm at okay. all Jabari questions today. No, I'm kidding. Oh. What, what, what Jabari is oh, doing? He's coming, Jabari though. Oh, yeah. Jabari's coming. Coming. Jabari's coming. Yeah. He's coming. Yeah. He's coming okay. through right now. Good. Yes, Jabari's okay. coming. Hey, Shane, can you take that thing down? There Three he is. I see Jabari. I can't. I have to do it. Okay. Hi, so Jen. there you what? go. I don't have a hi, hey, Jabari. Hello, hello. Hi, Nikki. I don't have a um got it. Okay. I don't have a uh a time. I mean, we have a time limit. They gave me 20 minutes with you guys, and I'm extremely excited. So let me just start by saying I'm so proud of all of y'all. Thank that you. Thank you. It's ridiculous. Thank you. Okay. Thank I mean, you. like CeeLo ridiculous. That kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it's insane. Jesse, I am so proud of you. Thank you, Nikki. Thank I you. I so have much. been a Jesse Smollett fan since I first laid eyes on you. Thank you so much. I really I'm appreciate it. I'm so that. excited to be talking to you guys. I'm so proud that you uh brought your project to DC. <laughs> Yes. Welcome to DC. You know we the, we the home of go go. Welcome to DC. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. We That's ready. We ready. And I'm so glad y'all agreed to talk to me. So I watched the film, mm -hmm. and I am in awe. Mm. Eight years. This project was in development for eight years. Justin? Yeah, yeah. Eight, wow. eight years. Eight years. From from uh from conception uh to to us being able to talk to. You you <laughs> um yeah it's been it's been exactly eight years that's amazing thank that's you amazing. i i want i have i have a bunch of questions but i'm so i gotta get over my fan moment right now <laughs> <laughs> you know every time i see any of my friends on on tv by surprise i fan out like i don't know them right <laughs> i call lunel every other day when because she's popping up on that's my girl that's i love lunel that's, that's why that's it's so funny that's one of jabari's like closest friends too and biblical yeah, friends. It. Oh, that was you. That's right. I saw you, you brought her to my 35th birthday party, Jabari. I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now I know. I, I remember. So I have a, a few questions for you guys because I, I want to respect your time because I know y'all got to get ready for the premiere and all of that stuff. But Vivica, I have been a Vivica A. Fox fan since I first seen you as well. And I think you're amazing and you are an awesome inspiration to all female thespians and male thespians out yeah. in this universe. And I'm, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for what you bring to the craft and to the world. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I appreciate Amen. that. I'm so proud of you. I so receive Jessica, all of that. And, and it's all you. It's all you. <laughs> Your character, Cassandra, discovers a lot about her son's life after mm -hmm. passing, which is insane for anybody, for anybody in real life. And that happens all too often. So yeah. how do you approach portraying a mother going through such a complex journey? Well, the fact that, uh, believe it or not, I have a ton of gay friends. My whole camp uh, is gay. And I've sat and listened to their stories of discovery, love, rejection, that I was able to pull from their experiences. Mm. Um, and then also, it's just playing a character that just doesn't know. Mm. She just doesn't know. It's a life that she had no idea about. Yeah. You know, last thing she, uh, conversation she had with her son, because her and her son were strange, was that he was going to Atlanta. Now, the audience got that, and you just did, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was just so funny with the, the screening in Miami that when she says, explains it to uh, Jesse's character, and it's like, last thing I know, he told me he was going to Atlanta, and da-da-da-da-da, but the audience totally got it, right? Mm -hmm. So there's all these little subtle nuggets that are dropped uh, throughout the, the, the movie to educate the public, like, Atlanta made as a as a huge gay uh, community, mm -hmm. um, and then she, of course, when she finds out, she's like, "Now, how long y'all know each other?" Then she wanted to know the history. She wanted discovery. Then she was like, "Listen, I ain't no country homophobe or nothing like that. This is just a lie." Because she 
probably he probably tried to tell her and she just wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to hear it. Yeah. And throughout the mu the movie, you turned into a mama bear. Yes. For, for the hu the husband, the, the son-in-law. And I'm like, okay, this is every typical black mom. And once we love you, we love you, right? Yeah. Well, that was mainly because, yeah, but it was mainly because of the daughter, mm. you know, mm. and, and and she could see his love for her and, and what the relationship, she finally opened her eyes to it. Like there's a line in the kitchen when she says for his funeral service that he put together, uh, uh, that the husband put together. Jesse's character. What's the name? Jordan? Jason. <laughs> Jason. Child, that's the end of the day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Three hours of sleep. Right. I'm sorry, baby. But anyway, Jason put together and she said to him, this was so beautiful. You guys, my son had a family. Mm -hmm. And that was just so beautiful yeah. that that was her finally kind of accepting that her son was happy that her son was loved and and maybe she could you know through ariel and them getting close and then it was just a lot of wonderful dynamics that yeah, yeah. yeah worked together mm. jabari you were the most impactful corpse that i've ever seen <laughs> goodbye yeah. nikki bye nikki. love <laughs> For a dead cat, you captivated, okay? So what I want to know is, what um, what do you hope viewers will glean from Damien's character as they watch The Lost Holiday? What is it that your dead impact <laughs> brought to this film? Uh, good question. Um, Legacy, legacy and purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, maximizing, maximizing your purpose in the time that you have. Mm. really what really is what I want the audience to walk away from in the understanding of that yeah okay good question I mean good response Thank okay you. Jesse yes Nikki <laughs> I know you directed on Empire uh, episode because I was that's when I fell in love with my you. episode was it your episode yes yeah, I, did. I did multiples but my first episode oh, you did more was... than one yeah, yeah, but, okay. but my first episode was actually, I was so blessed because it was the episode that introduced Alfred Woodard's character. It was, I got to direct a scene with around the table with four of the strongest actresses I've ever worked with, Taraji P. Henson, Alfred Woodard, Tasha Smith, and Vivica A. Fox. Mm. And I was like, okay, I got to work with each one of these women individually because it's just too magical you know mm -hmm. and um so yeah so yeah i've been i've been i've been you know saucing up my director skills for a little minute listen i gotta tell you this is so dope and for more than one reason in this post george floyd culture sure really mm -hmm. and taraji recently came out about the disparity in pay for mm -hmm. black actors in hollywood and all of the things mm -hmm. i want to know from each of you what has this recent culture, and I'm so proud that you have continued, Jesse, despite you. all of the drama and all of the nonsense mm -hmm. that happened. I'm team Jesse. Good, bad, Thank right. you for that. Thank you. I want you to know that, but I want to know how this has impacted you guys individually, each of you. This, for this, myself, I, I, I'll, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. For myself, it was the main reason why I did the movie. Because mm -hmm. I love my nephew. My nephew is so talented. Indeed. My, my nephew has so much more to offer that I was like, don't let one moment define, define your future. Things happen. Handle it as a man. Do the work. Mm. And soon, that's what will come. That's what will let you beautifully go into a new chapter. You have talent. They can never take that away from you. So you do the work and let's go forward. And we have. Indeed. Eight years later. Here we go. <laughs> you wore a lot of hats in this too, Jesse. We'll come back to that. Brittany. Yes, ma'am. Are there any memorable, because this is, I have a show also called Backstage Beyond the Laughs here, right? And what I want to know is I love behind the scenes stuff. I just feel like when we go to work and we have fun, that's that's the show. That's the life. Yes. And, and, and as much as we create these amazing, magical uh, moments in, in media and movies, 
I want to know what was your most memorable behind the scenes moment? <laughs> it was a moment with Vivica sitting at the table. We were shooting um, the scene and you know, her character was upset. So she was like poking at her plate, like eating angry. And I remember I was in the scene, but in the scene, I was thinking, I've watched her do this. I've watched her do this in a movie. And then as soon as they said cut, I was like, excuse me. Um, the thing you were doing with your fork, she said, yeah, I got that from my brother. And that was a teaching moment for me as an actor because learning how Vivica A. Fox pulls from her family yeah. to bring into character is not something you would know. Mm -hmm. Just you know what I mean? You you could you could assume it may be instinct and maybe this, but it's it's truly saying like, look at how she pulls from life. That's beautiful. Look at how she pulls from people around her. That's beautiful. So that's like it was just a beautiful teaching moment for me. Cause I I I, I too like to pull from life. So yeah. someone who I admire, who I adore, who I've been learning from, that's the same thing I do. Mm. And oh my gosh, that was just a beautiful moment, you know? Mm. And she's definitely one of the goats, honey. So. Absolutely. She's one of the goats. But can, <laughs> can, I, can, I just, can I just say this? Mm -hmm. To me, there's a difference between one of the goats and being one of the goats that doesn't gatekeep their goatism. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and she doesn't. She is so, she truly is a completely unselfish scene partner. She does not, I've, I've worked with people before, um, you know, they, well, I don't know, I'm going to throw nobody under the bus, but where you're working with an actor and he'll give you everything, he'll give you nothing on your, um, on your coverage, on your close ups. Yeah. And then when they turn around on him and you just like, well, that was an amazing performance. Wish that I, <laughs> wish that I had seen it. <laughs> you know, wish I had experienced that. Cause right now we in two different damn scenes. Yeah. And Vivica was just so, there was no ego. There was no like, ooh, who's 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 this actor? Who's this 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 whatever? It was. She was. She came on set. She was utterly prepared. And I know that I know how many hats I wear on this. But Vivica was our leader. You know, mm -hmm. she set the tone for what we were going to do because she is she is the goat. You know what I mean? So for that, I would just forever honor this woman for the heart that she has. But. But aside from that, she is just great at what she does. And it's undeniable. Yeah. And it's unselfish with her knowledge. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. this Say is, that shit I, with your chest. <laughs> what? What? Exactly. I love it. I have had the opportunity to work with some of the people who I've admired immensely throughout life, one of which was Dick Gregory. Mm. Uh, oh. D.L. Hughley. And mm. I felt so honored and privileged to just have come across them, including Lou now. Um, I want to ask you, Brittany, what was it like being in, in this project and on set daily for those 11 days <laughs> <laughs> with Jesse and Vivica and Jabari? I do something often where I constantly whisper to myself, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Thank, mm -hmm. you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And that's all I do. And that's all I did on that set. Uh, just in little moments, constantly, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because that was always the feeling on set with them. You know what I mean? And even though we shot for 11 days, nothing felt rushed. It didn't feel rushed. It felt like it was flowing at a pace it was supposed to flow at because everyone was collaborating. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, it, and you, everyone was on the team to collaborate and get it done. And I just remember just, and we shot, ooh, we shot on a farm. And there was moments where I would just sit and watch cattle. And I remember there was this mor morning where I arrived on set and the farmhand opened the gates and all this cattle just came flooding out like free and just covered the fields. And I just thought, that's how it feels. Doing what you love. Like you just get show up to work, doing what you love around amazing people. You feel free. Thank you, God. That's all I felt. Thank you, God. Yes. That's Jabari. crazy how that the the the, the cows going mm -hmm. to Rome mm -hmm. stuck with you. That's beautiful. Symbolic. So yeah. many beautiful moments. Even Symbolic. moments with Jabari in the car. We were sitting in the car just mm -hmm. talking and it's just like, you know, we met in acting class wow. years ago. Okay. And now we're here on set together. Like mm -hmm. wow. 
you know? Making a classic. Yes, making an iconic film with iconic people. What are you saying to me right now? This is magic. Y'all don't experience this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, that's why I never take it for granted. Yeah. If I could just piggy bank off of that. You mm-hmm. know, people say, Vivica, you work so much. Did I say, because I love what I do. Mm-hmm. It's an mm-hmm. honor the magic of making movies there's so many people that want to do what we do so always keep that grateful spirit and that grateful heart and god will continue to bless you with moments like that and you even talk like a legend he is okay thinking us over here okay because <laughs> someone giving, told me giving baby diane carroll yeah. baby diane carroll and you know who else taught me wonderful stories hmm. and told me wonderful stories pam greer oh, oh, yes i know i know yeah, yeah. i did my yeah. production company after her and i oh got to gosh. interview her one time and i was crying the whole time she said baby why are you crying so much i said because you're a legend to me and she <laughs> said vivica i challenge you to do the same mm. pass that baton to others and you, you sure have, did. And you have you it. did. Yeah. 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 And so you I keep. always, when I think about that, and that mm. it's that it's what I'm supposed to do. That's what she said to me. It's what I'm supposed to do. And I challenge you to do the same. Mm-hmm. And I've never forgot. Mm-hmm. Gracious. Now, it's some of these little heifers that don't deserve the <laughs> fun. No, I'm, playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I just had to crack a joke. See? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Comedy rules. See, see, see Nikki, we comedians too. <laughs> I don't know no black people that ain't funny. <laughs> Listen, Jabari, I want to ask you, can you uh what what did you draw upon? And I want you to share the kind of person that you portray Damien to be, because even when they write the script and put the words on the page, you still gotta create the character. That's right. What is the kind of person, well, the kind of person that Damien was in life and how his relationship with Jason and Cassandra was, how did you shape that narrative? How did you create the energy with your dead self to make him the person that stood out the way you did? Um, Well, starting off with authenticity, that's, I think that's the main, that's the main thing. You got to let it resonate with yourself so it can mm. be able to let it resonate with other people. Mm. Um, but say your question one more time. <laughs> <laughs> so, if it resonated with you, who did that 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 this story made you remember? <laughs> um, if it um well, okay, since okay, let's take it back. Mm-hmm. My father died a few years ago. And oh, many hmm. things that I felt like there's so many things that were missed from the time that he passed, from the time till now. And even from the time before that he passed. So, like I said earlier, purpose and legacy. Mm. That's what I was able to pull from is wanting to have the strongest relationship with whoever is present in front of me. Mm. And and that's that's what it is. (laughs) Yeah. That's deep. Mm -hmm. That's deep. Jesse. You're introducing new music. No, we love you for your voice, your vocals, your amazing vocals. Tell me more about the songs you created for the Lost Holiday and what we can expect and how they resonate to shape this story. Because mm. you know, the, the soundtrack is the soundtrack is the, is the movie. Thank you. So you support um, the movie. Yeah, the, the, the soundtrack was really created with... <laughs> the soundtrack was created just like b-boy blues was well b-boy blues the the uh the score was mm-hmm. created by shawan andrews b bearded and david michael ott who i've been working with for i've been working with david for about 15 years before empire before anything um half of half of the songs on season one uh were from my album that he had produced with me before the show even existed. And then we had to like pull my album, couldn't release it because I got the, the contract for the show. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, everything from I Wanna Love You and uh, all of the above and all of those beautiful songs from the show that was done by David and myself. Uh, you know, mm. it helps because we don't have a large budget. 
<laughs> so it helps to be able to create the music ourselves. Yeah. And, um, uh, but the music that was created, the music that was written by Adiv and uh, Melody Ray and, you know, uh, Miriam, Miriam Hyman, who plays Katya in this film and goes by Robin Hood. Uh, she, she just, her music is, is wonderful. And she, she uh, gave some songs that, just people were, I just basically called up friends and said, hey, I'm making this, G give me something, give me something. And, mm -hmm. you know, these are all indie artists, uh, and, including myself. And it's being, you know, the music is being released. I'm releasing a, a single by the end of the month, I think right before the movie comes out. Uh, so, you know, we've just been in there. Music, music is the center of pretty much everything that I do when I'm writing, the music is on when when I'm when I'm coming up with an idea for a film or any project. There is literally a playlist that is created of the vibe of that um, of that film. And the one thing that I did not listen to when we were uh, creating this movie was holiday music because I did not want it to be a holiday <laughs> film. It really is the holidays is the backdrop. It's a family dramedy that can literally last throughout the throughout the um, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and. Um, so, you know, I, I, but music is, music is at the core of who I am. Uh, and so the music just, to me, the music, te music tells such a story lyrically mm -hmm. and sonically, it tells such a story to push storylines in film further along. You know, I'm such a, a fan of, you know, Quincy Jones and people like that, that did, I'm such a fan of like the old school score, you know, um, Terrence Blanchard and, 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 and John Williams and just these yeah. great, these great musicians that we created something that I hope that the music and the, and the, the movie goes hand in hand, but also keep in mind, I was raised pretty much in front of y'all, even I was an, already a fully grown adult. I was kind of brought up in front of y'all as, someone that was blessed enough to be able to do a TV show where I was able to do drama and comedy and also be able to do music every single week. Mm -hmm. So it would be difficult for me to walk away from that and then walk into something else where it's like music is just, is nowhere in there. Music, music drives every single thing that I do. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Okay, I, we got to wrap. I have to ask you, Jesse. So mm -hmm. film, the film deals with, so many different things grief um yeah. love acceptance you know especially within the lbgtq you almost got the letters right you almost got them right lgbtqia plus yes <laughs> Come oh, kill it Nikki. Kill it, kill it. Okay. all right i know my alphabets <laughs> how important was it for you to tell this story and what did you hope the impact of this film would be you know, I say this a lot. <laughs> when I was 19 years old, I wrote in my journal, I wrote, I just want to normalize what it is to be a Black gay man. Wow. Mm. And now that I'm in my 40s, I look at it and I'm just like, what the hell is normal, right? <laughs> and But at the same time, what I know for sure is that it's not normalizing, but I want to humanize it. And I think that that was my mission and that is my mission for everything that I do even if I'm not playing a gay character, that character deserves to be humanized in real form. Mm -hmm. And so these stories, I often say that I grew up looking at, Soul Food was one of my favorite movies growing up, right? And yeah. and, and Why the Fools Fall in Love for a million yeah. reasons, right? Yeah. But so was The Sound of Music and you know the Training Day and all of these different movies, Boys in the Hood, Do the Right Thing. Yeah, but none of those none of those films had gay characters in it. Yet I still Magnolias. None of these films had gay characters in it, but I still identified with those stories. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I identified with those stories is because I identified with the humanity of it, the the joy, the pain, the love, the 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 hate, the whatever it is. I identify with that. So what I want to do in every project that I do is to hold up a mirror and you can figure it out for yourself. It's a piece of art. I don't need to spoon feed the audience, but what I do need to do is humanize these people so that you can see a piece of yourself in every single character. I don't care if it's a trans man or a lesbian woman or a gay man or a heterosexual woman, whoever it is, you can find pieces of yourself within those characters because we are so much more alike than we're not. 
Right. That's my goal. That's the only goal that I have here. Like this not, it's not some sinister plan. It's not some, you know, it's not some, you know, weird thing that I'm trying to push on anybody. I simply am living my life and mm-hmm. playing characters that reflect that. That's it. Normal is so subjective. So like, subjective. So, so subjective, subjective, which is why, which and is I'm why so normalizing glad. is not the is not the mission. It's humanizing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm glad you said that. And I hope that that resonates with everyone. I really appreciate all of you so Thank much. You. And You're just welcome. you and what, what you share with us, the world. And the fact that I've had this opportunity has been life-changing for me. Mm, Thank you, Nikki. Because I remember every moment that I met somebody who has impacted my life the way that each of you have. So just want to ask this. Brittany. Yes. Jabari. Viv. Jesse. What's your favorite thing to do in D.C.? See family. You say, oh, yeah, you home. See family. Okay, not you, Brittany. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to Bus Boys and Poets tonight. Oh, can we? Place. There's salmon. Oh my god! I love Bus the Boys tap and water? Poets, and maybe it's because I just love Langston Hughes. But it's okay. just like Bus Boys and Poets has always been my thing. That's it me was too. that. It was that and the park. The park. The park. Oh, the park. The park. so you the know you, that was oh, Mark Bonds would be happy to get that. <laughs> we gotta go. Okay. okay. We all we all have a little moment in DC. We gotta go. Driving around seeing the monuments. I literally was looking down yeah. at my phone and I turned and looked for a second. I was like, stop looking at your phone. We don't have things like this in California. Yeah. We have mountains and beaches and stuff like this. But here it's like you'll drive. There's the White House. Yeah. There's the Martin Luther King statue. There's what is that? The monument with the pyramid mm-hmm. thing. And I mean it's just it's like history. Like this is Washington D.C. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, let me go see the White House. I need American... to go see my future home. I need to right. go see the White House and go on Black Lives Matter Plaza. Right. Okay. Oh. I took Mark Curry there. He lost his whole mind. I know. And then you saw the American, the African American Museum. I mean, it's just beautiful. It's yeah, amazing. It's beautiful. DC, it's beautiful. y'all got it going on. Oh, yeah, and we are so we are so Mari. blessed to be able to do this tonight at MLK Library too. Like, what yeah. a legendary opportunity for us to be there. So, yeah. just DC shows so much, so much. Love. I'm in the room. I'll be there. All right. We oh, you will be there. All right, good. I was oh, gonna yeah, ask you. I know you've seen the movie, Mari, but it's like, come a on through. Still. Do you have Rocky. God. <laughs> what? My favorite thing uh, about <laughs> <laughs> is the uh, culture. Like, shout out to Howard University. I'm yeah. a proud. Uh, yeah. It's you. It's you. You Morehouse know. College. I went to I finished that Morehouse. So, you know, it's always good to, especially around the fall time, to pull up to the universities, especially homecoming time, football game okay. time, uh, uh, tailgating and all that stuff. So that's my favorite part about this. Guys, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. We'll and see you I tonight. appreciate it. I see you tonight. We'll see you tonight. Thank you, Thank you Nikki. Congratulations right. on this amazing project. Thank you very much. Same to you. Thank Love you. you. Bye. 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 I got to keep smiling to everybody gone. <laughs>